Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God, just arrive later once again, and hoping the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. We meet once again in yet another presentation inside the Word of God, and praying that you are given the strength, the honor, the peace, the humility, the subjection under the Word of God, the resilience, the endurance, the hope in times of hopelessness and praying that the word ministration is continually giving you the purpose of salvation in your everyday life. Today I've been assigned once again by the Holy Spirit and he that lives forever to present unto you yet another masterpiece and today i want to present the miracles signs and wonders but before i take you into today's presentation i want you to know that the very first miracle that happened to moses happened when he was born how he was left in a basket and then grew up in the house of pharaoh as a prince of egypt being raised under a system that you are going to work against being raised under a system that you ought to study how it functions before your deployment being raised knowing that in the future you are going to fulfill your purpose as a deliverer of the tribe of God, which were the slaves in Egypt, the loins of our almighty God. And then Moses is now grown And it came a time when Moses had to move out of the palace. I'm briefly narrating so that I take you to where the Holy Spirit has given me the whole presentation, relevance of this presentation. Moses moves out of the palace and when Moses moves out of the palace he moves out paving paving way for the other prince who was going to be the next pharaoh now Moses traveled and lived in a certain land which I believe every man of God, every prophet, anyone that has got a great calling is moments where the Lord takes him into dry places moments when he is taken into a wilderness calling when i'm talking about a wilderness calling i'm talking about an environment that allows you to interact intimately with the lord you are removed from the palace 
you are removed from a comfortable environment and when you are removed from a comfortable environment you are removed from that environment so that you adapt to the airwaves of the communications you adapt to the communications and the interactions with God and in Exodus chapter 4 verse 1 Moses was traveling where he was traveling and he encountered a burning bush when Moses encountered this burning bush the scripture says and an angel of the Lord spake from the burning bush that alone is the first miracle the first sign a wonder itself why because you cannot come across a bush that is burning and as if it is not enough that bush is not only burning but it is talking when moses encountered the burning bush moses almost fled away inside his thoughts but as he was about to flee away a voice began to speak remove your singles moses for the place which you are is holy and then moses started taking his first steps into the calling of miracles signs and wonders by approaching nearer to the presence of the burning bush this alone this encounter that is happening here it defines the very calling of moses moses is gone closer to the burning bush and the burning bush has got an assignment for moses but the assignment which the burning bush has for moses cannot be fulfilled without the burning bush first unveiling itself unto moses why because moses would want to know who is this speaking inside this burning bush why because it is an unusual thing for a bush to continue burning without being consumed and the one that is speaking inside this burning bush is introduced himself as i am i am what i am the reason why he has described himself as i am what i am is because he has got many multiple descriptions of definitions so for him to explain to moses who really he is it will need more than two thousand samples like the samples that have been presented by the revelator over two years and even after you have presented all those samples you still need to describe him he is unexplainable he is amazing he is traumatizing he is fascinating he is everything that you can describe anything you that you can ever imagine His name is the Almighty God. Like I said, the burning bush has got an assignment for you, Moses. And the 
burning bush began to give Moses an assignment. And Moses is being given an assignment. And the assignment is simple. That Moses, you have to go back where you fled away from. Why? Because when Moses fled away from Egypt, He had done what he had done, which was an offense against the Egyptians. And Moses is wondering, who is inside this burning bush who is assigning me to go back to Egypt? Does he even care about my life? Does he know how I left Egypt, how I escaped in Egypt? But Moses did not know that this was the voice of the possessor of all power. The fire that was flaming is actually one of his characteristics. Like I said, he has got multiple definitions of characteristics. He represents many dimensions. And in Exodus chapter 4, verse 1, and Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me or hearken unto my voice. Moses is saying, I just came here and I'm coming across a burning bush and I'm hearing a voice. Oh yes, I've believed that you are God because there is no way a bush can continue burning like this. I might not have knowledge about you, but the way that this bush is burning, it is a miracle on its own. And the bush itself is not being consumed and moreover there is a voice that is speaking. But here is my issue. Moses began to politic with the burning bush. Moses is saying, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, the Lord has not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, what is in thy hand? And Moses said, A rod. And the Lord said, Cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled away from the same rod that he had thrown down, that he had become a serpent. We're talking about a miracle. We're talking about a sign. We're talking about a wonder. Moses, why have you fled away from your calling? You were instructed to throw down the road, and as soon as you threw down the road, it became a serpent. What God is simply trying to illustrate to Moses with that miracle is that I am God and I've got the capacity, number one, to do miracles, number two, to do signs, number three, to do wonders, number four, you're going to have power over the serpent. Number five, I'm the God that is in charge of both the light and the darkness. I can turn anything into something. I can turn nothing to something. Why? Because 
all this while what Moses has been doing is that he, he is trying to dispute with God that he, he cannot become the right candidate for this particular assignment that God is trying to send him. So for you to be sent into such an assignment, you must understand the type of God that has assigned you. You have already seen the supernatural abilities which this type of God has. And after having witnessed the type of supernatural abilities which this type of God has, I'm going to impart unto you these abilities so that your miracles, signs and wonders which you are going to distribute and demonstrate, which are going to dispatch in the presence of Pharaoh, they are going to be your ultimate language. Miracles, signs and wonders, they are a language in the ministry. Gone are the days when we are going to sit down for hours listening to preachers that only preach theories and they don't prove that the almighty god who is a miraculous god a god of signs a god of wonders is truly speaking if a god of signs miracles and wonders has been unleashed his sermon must not end without him demonstrating that he, indeed he is a god that does beyond speaking why because i myself as the revelator i've grown tired of gods that don't prove themselves why because i myself as the revelator i've preached over thousands of sermons so I wouldn't want a preacher that would come in my presence and start preaching a sermon only. Unless you just want to annoy me with a sermon. Why? Because you are giving me what I already have. You are giving me probably what I've already dispatched more than you. So you cannot come in my presence as a man of God with the theories. Oh yes, the word is the lamp to my feet. Oh yes, the word is life. This word uh, is not only spirit, it is life. But when it comes to the demonstration of a living God, you have to prove yourself beyond just words. You have to prove yourself beyond just holding that microphone and preaching for three hours. Moses has thrown down his own road and it becomes a serpent. Why? Because you have been politicking with God and God has finished this sermon. He has finished debating with you. It's now time for demonstration of power. After the serpent had been thrown down, Moses fled away from it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And Moses put forth his hand and caught it and it became a rod again in his hand. Moses was puzzled. Moses was baffled. Moses was amazed. Why? Because all this time he has been trying to politic and to dispute the power of God. We are not going to be having pastors, evangelists, prophets that are busy debating over the microphone. When you've got scriptures of Elijah who gathered the first prophets of Baal and commanded fire to come down, that is the God that I believe in. Don't tell me that this only happened during the times of the early church. That is the God that I believe in. And if I don't see that kind of God operating in my calling, then I will not, I will not be sustained. I will not be content. Why is the world 
has become so evil, why is it the world has become so stubborn? This world is now full of unbelievers, hypocrites, artists, negative demonic scientists, people who want to politic about the existence of God. People who are writing books to prove that God does not exist. Such a generation does not need ordinary preachers that are busy just preaching theories. This generation needs an almighty living God who is continually demonstrating the power of God. When Moses caught the rod, which was now a serpent by his tail, it became a rod again. And the Lord said that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared unto you. Even God himself understands that if I don't give you, Moses, a few signs, a few miracles, a few demonstration abilities of power, they are not going to believe. Yes, I know that I've introduced myself to you, Moses. Yes, I know that I've given you a few verses. Yes, I know that I've given you revelations, but if I don't give you a bit of unusual abilities, these people on earth, they are not going to believe you. And I'm telling you, we have arrived in a generation whereby just reading a scripture is not enough. It's not enough. I know the word is power. Everything is structured by the word, even miracles, signs and wonders. But if your word does not manifest unusual abilities, these stubborn people, they are not going to listen to you. You can imagine we've got people that are stubborn. Why least miracle signs and wonders are actually being performed? What more when you just go to those people with your theories? You're playing. You're going to become a laughing stock. You're going to get mocked. They are going to undermine your God. And you're not going to convince any one of those people in this last generation of evil people. And the Lord said furthermore, now, I've demonstrated that sign. In case you are thinking that was this some illusion. And the Lord then said unto Moses, now put forth thine hand into thy bosom and put that hand into your pocket. And Moses did as he was instructed. And when he took his hand out of his bosom, his hand was leprous as snow. His hand now had leprous. What the Lord is simply saying is, by your hand shall you be able to bless or to kiss. By your hand shall you be able to destroy or to be to build. By your hand shall you be able to deliver or to destroy. Those are the abilities that Moses is being given through the demonstration of the language or the voice of miracles, signs and wonders. Miracles, signs and wonders, they are a voice. It's not some magic stuff. It's not some illusion. I get so surprised when I watch episodes of shows like Britain has got talent, America has got talent. You see magicians, you see wizards, you see people with the strange abilities that are spiritual. Abilities which you know that if you enter the house of the Lord, you are not going to see that. It, it, it is a very 
big concern unto me as the revelator very big concern how the world can produce people that have got strange spiritual ability you see someone changing into a monkey right on the stage i'm not talking about tricks i'm talking about the spiritual genuine miracles which are done by magicians wizards astrologers but these are the offices in the early church in the new testament in the old testament all these offices they were under men of god Do you know that daniel was given abilities above magicians astrologers wizards but in this generation men of god are being dominated I refuse to function under a useless calling. I refuse to be dominated by the earth as one that is a representative of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord then said unto Moses, put back thine hand into thy bosom again. And as he put his hand back into his bosom again and then took out his hand, it was turned again as any other part of his body meaning that the end was now normal it was now smooth that alone is not the first or the second sign it is now more than just the why because before the sign of the road that has been thrown down and it became a serpent before the end that he put in his bosom remember moses is still communicating with a burning bush already you must know that a person that has encountered all this when he goes to preach is not going to preach to us verses only we are, we are debating we are fighting on the pulpits but what we don't understand is that when God called you as a man of God, you are called by a specific encounter which is completely separate from the one that you are debating with. That one was called by just reading verses. He has never heard God, never seen God, never experienced God. Even when he reads the Bible that has got such, such contents, he will never come across this verse. He will just ignore it. There are people that you cannot impart unto strange abilities. And those people that you cannot impart unto strange abilities is because they don't have the capacity of miracle signs and wonders. I reached a point of thinking the gospel of teleportation dimensions ascension dimensions sending disciples into the realms sending disciples into vision encounters sending and assigning disciples into various wars in the realms why because i am in this calling i reach a level whereby it becomes normal unto me up until God presents a new disciple. And you can see that disciple when she comes back or when he comes back that he is so frightened. She is so frightened, so alarmed, so shocked. why because i am in that particular calling it becomes normal for me that is in that calling including the disciples who are witnessing that type of calling but you cannot take that content to a preacher who only hears god by reading a verse and does not see god 
there's a level of just hearing God. There's a level of witnessing God. Coming face to face with God. Those are different dimensions. And the Lord then says after these miracles, and it shall come to pass that if they will not believe you, neither hearken to the first sign, they will believe the voice of the later sign. Meaning that God is demonstrating miracles, signs, and wonders. And those are three different voices. Miracles, signs, and wonders. A miracle is just to blow your mind. So that you can pay attention. A sign is to give you who is trying to draw your attention you're being given a sign who's trying to draw your attention and a wonder is not only to amaze you but to shock you and give you the conviction and the revelation of who is in your presence so if you don't get a miracle sign and wonder And you just read a verse. Does not mean that you don't, you won't believe in God. You'll believe in God, but you'll be a very weak believer in the presence of these most stubborn people in this last age. And it shall come to pass if they will not believe also these two signs, neither hearken unto thy voice that you shall take of the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land and the water which you have taken to the river shall become blood upon the dry land and moses said unto the lord but lord i'm not eloquent yes you are not eloquent moses this is why you have been given the voice of miracles signs and wonders moses wants to explain that he's not eloquent but he has just been told, I just gave you a voice. People don't understand what a voice is. We've got people that have been raised by God who are not even educated, who were raised through the voice of miracles, signs and wonders. Moses wants eloquence. He wants to be like a preachers that preach for six hours. And then they release the offering basket and they come down from the pulpit and you cannot go close to them the escort will be just behind them and they walk out moses is saying i'm not eloquent after being given all these signs and wonders what eloquence do you need to what what eloquence why do you need that eloquence there are people that need eloquence. There are people that are trying to tune their voices while they are preaching. People that are trying to tune their voices so that they can become so intellect and fluent. That is not what uh, the podium of God is all about. That is not what God is all about. God is all about the demonstration of power. Paul says, I did not come unto you with the enticing words, but the power itself. Moses is saying, I'm not eloquent, neither therefore. Since you have, spoke, you have spoken unto thy servant, but I'm slow of speech and slow of tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who has made a man's mouth? Oh, who maketh the dumb, or the deaf, or the sing, or the blind? Have I not said uh, the Lord, as he was trying to clarify unto Moses, that all your excuses, they are invalid. I've given you the greater voice, which is beyond the theories that they are preaching. Now, therefore, go, and I'll be your mouth, and teach what I shall put 
what I have already put rather inside your mouth. But Moses continually resisted and said, Oh Lord, I, I pray, send someone else. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. The reason why the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses is because the Lord believes that the voices that he has given Moses, they are greater than the theories that are being preached on the pulpit. Moses is rather wanting a calling of preaching. He wants eloquence. He believes that Pharaoh will hear him. Why? Because Moses was raised in a system. The system of Pharaoh represents the system of this world. The system of this world, which is the academical system, where they rate your voice with your fluent tongue, your excellence in speech, even if you are talking nonsense, as long as, it, as it's good English. But that is not power. That is not the ministry of miracles, signs, and wonders. And then the Lord then asks, is, not, is that not Aaron, the Levite, thy brother? I know that he can speak well. The Lord is simply trying to tell Moses that he isn't that Aaron. I know that he can speak well. He's simply trying to say there are people like Aaron. They don't even need to come across the burning bush. They don't even need the anointing. They don't they don't even need all these signs that are demonstrated here for them to speak well. Since you appear to be interested in the excellence of speech isn't that aaron tell your brother aaron to come here and then aaron shall be your spokesperson aaron shall be your mouthpiece but you shall be as god unto aaron that is what the lord said to Aaron, you shall be as God, meaning that the burning bush is saying unto Aaron, you shall be as God. All that you have to do is declare things, instruct things, and they come to pass. That is the position of power. The position of power is not preaching sermons. The position of power is declaring things that come to pass. So Aaron is the one that is going to do the talking. Aaron represents the preachers that hold the microphone and they preach for four hours until we fall asleep in church. Exodus chapter 4 verse 16. And Aaron shall be thy spokesperson unto the people. He shall be doing the long sermons. Instead of a mouth and you shall be to him instead of God. And thou shalt take this rod in thy hand and do signs, which is the ultimate language that I'm giving you. And Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father, in the law. Child of God, I'm here to present miracles, signs, and wonders. Moses later on then entered into Egypt and did many miracles, signs, and wonders which were beyond just throwing down the road that became a serpent. We are talking about changing water to become blood. We are talking about multiple unique miracles, signs, and wonders. Up until the last sign which was taken of the angel that the angel of death that killed every firstborn child. There is no miracle. There is no sign. There is no wonder that can be done by someone that only believes in theories. And there is no ministry without miracles, signs, and wonders that can affect the ultimate voice of God in the name of Jesus.
Thank you.